This week we're... This week we're looking at the nut. This week we're looking at the nine of wands. Will you not? This week we're looking at the nine of wands. Welcome back to Keep His Quest. This fella looks like he's having a bad time. I always feel for the guy whenever he pops up, but I don't think you could ever meet someone who hasn't felt like that at some point. The Nine of Wands is a card all about battling against adversity and the general crap that life sometimes throws at us. Ultimately, it's a positive card though. It's all about not giving up. If we look at the figure on the card, he's obviously taken a beating, but like Elton John, he's still standing. <laughs> Rachel Pollack says, in the Nine we see again the image of someone who has faced a lot of opposition, from others and from life. Rather than take it on himself, however, he has fought back. Onto the cards, now you'll never guess what the Sforza of Marseille look like. The Solar Busker depicts a woman in the nip, using Nine Ones to cover her shame, as you do. The Rider Waite gives us the classic design with our unfortunate friend looking a bit worse for wear, but hanging on. Waite says, the figure leans upon his staff and has an expectant look as if awaiting an enemy. Behind are eight other staves, erect, <laughs> in orderly disposition like a palisade. The Thoth Tarot has a very clean design for this one, heavy with a Kabbalistic symbolism. Crowley says the wands have now become arrows. There are eight of them in the background and in front of them one master arrow. This has the moon for its point and the sun for the driving force behind it. The main arrow is the path between Tiferet and Yesod on the Tree of Life, with the sun at the top and the moon at the bottom. <laughs> Seven, a specific number of life in general. Yeah, but this is the nine. I know, but that's what it says. Don't shoot the messenger. Sorry, Monty. Seven, a specific number of life in general, is presented in the sphere of the symbol of vegetation, from which it needs its physical subsistence. Yep, absolutely bang on with the spheres and the vegetables. This delay in multiplication is an effective obstacle to the constant and unlimited production of vegetation. Oh, well, we can't have that, can we? We want our... Unlimited vegetables. The hermetic title for the Nine of Wands is Lord of Great Strength. Straight away we can see the comparisons to the Strength card back at number 8 in the Major Arcane. If you've seen that video, you'll know that the main concept of Strength was finding the will and courage to keep going when everything seems to be working against us. Strength in this regard relates to resilience and determination, which we can see quite clearly on the Wade Smith card. However, it can also refer to having the strength to maintain clear boundaries and standing up for ourselves. The Nine of Wands corresponds to the Sagittarius zodiac sign and is ruled by the Moon. So we're looking at the Moon in Sagittarius this time. The mutable fire sign of Sagittarius, with its energy and curiosity, is paired here with the Moon, symbol of our subconscious mind and spiritual side. This combination can be adventurous with the desire for freedom and independence. This can manifest itself as a restless nature and a feeling of discomfort when being stuck in one place for too long. According to Alistair Crowley, this card is also governed by the Moon in Sagittarius, so here is a double influence of the Moon on the Tree of Life. Hence the aphorism, change is stability. The Nine of Wands resides in the world of Atzalut and sits at the Ninth Sephiroth of Yesot on the Pillar of Marvelous. The name of this Sephiroth translates to Foundation. So we've arrived at Yesod. This is the final Sephira before we enter the physical realm. It's considered to be the connection between the divine and the manifest worlds, or you could equally call it the bridge between the subconscious and the conscious. It's governed by the moon and it's associated with dreams, imagination and the collective unconscious. German psychologist Carl Jung described this as a second psychic system of a collective, universal and impersonal nature. Yesod also marks the last sephira of the three that make up the mundane triangle. This is the final triangle at the bottom of the tree and is associated with ego and personality. In the Garden of Pomegranates, Israel Regardi says Netzach and Hod result in Yesod, the foundation, completing a series of three triads. Yesod is that subtle basis upon which the physical world is based. The Nine of Wands herb is bayberry bark. This herb is associated with prosperity and could be used to tone and contract the flaccid tissues. Don't know what you're talking about. But what does it all mean? When the Nine of Wands turns up, it's generally taken as a sign of fighting through obstacles and coming out the other side. According to Waite, the card signifies strength in opposition. If attacked, the person will meet an onslaught boldly, and his build shows that he may prove a formidable antagonist. With this main significance, there are all its possible adjuncts. Delay, suspension, adjournment. 
The card can also be a warning to not become overly defensive or too engaged in fighting for its own sake. Rachel Pollack says whether by necessity or habit, he has closed off awareness of life beyond conflict and now only looks for the next fight. If the Querent is a sailor, this tarot predicts bad weather, which will prevent a departure he desires. Looks like we're not going to the Isle of Wight this weekend. Oh. It predicts you will make a fortune in a foreign country. Well, if anyone outside of the UK would like to fly us over... When the Nine of Wands appears upside down, it can be taken as a sign of being defeated. Waite has a very simple description for this one. He says, reversed, obstacles, adversity, calamity. So everything's going to be terrible. Don't even bother getting out of bed. Rachel Pollock offers us two meanings for the reverse card. She says, first, the defense fails. The obstacles and problems grow too great for his strength to hold them back. The other meaning, however, is that of looking for some different approach. Now that's interesting, as it suggests that maybe you're looking at the situation in the wrong way, and it might be worth taking another look at your strategy. Sometimes when we're trying to achieve something, we can get locked into a frame of mind that makes us keep trying a method that isn't working. I think it was Einstein who said the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results. Except Einstein didn't say that. Really? Who did then? Don't know. Oh, thanks for that. Well, it still works, so let's leave it in. In the reverse, it gives rise to fear of many nuisances. Business as usual then, by the sound of it. The big takeaway for the Nine of Wands is resilience and perseverance. The card embodies the message of staying determined, whatever life throws at you. Babe Ruth once said, you just can't beat the person who never gives up. Thank you for joining us yet again on Kippy's Quest. May the coming days bring you strength, endurance, and we hope you'll struggle your way through to liking this video and subscribing to our channel. Until next time.